Galwr aelodau i drefn yr eitem gyntaf yn y gen ni y prynawn yma i'r cwestiynau i'r prif weinidog. Yr cwestiwn cyntaf Mohamed Ashka. Thank you, Madam Presiding Officer, and good afternoon, First Minister. What is the Welsh Government doing to improve access to work experience placements for secondary school pupils in Wales, please? Well, we continue to work with uh, secondary schools and employers to help prepare young people for the world of work, and that includes funding the Business Class Project, delivered by Careers Wales in partnership with Business in the Community, which has established 81 school business partnerships across Wales. Well, thank you for the answer, Minister, but my question is, in previous years, secondary school people have been sent on placement to experience the world of work. It was the duty of Careers Wales to check the employers and their workplaces were suitable, safe environments, and that legal requirements on insurance and risk assessment were met. However, your government has forced Career Wales to phase out this service due to budget cuts, thereby removing the opportunity for people to enjoy the benefit of work experience placements. Can the First Minister explain how stopping these safety checks due to budget cuts will promote and expand access to work experience placement in Wales? Well, I mean, as I understand, Gwyneth and Anglesey have taken the decision to withdraw from offering work experience placements for pupils in other parts of Wales. Schools and local authorities have worked together to find new solutions in response to the change of services provided by Careers Wales in 2015. David Rees. First Minister, the work experience is critical for young people, and those with learning difficulties or perhaps other neurological conditions, such as autism, which we will be discussing tomorrow, often find difficulty in getting out of the workplace. Now, there are some schools which put on simulated work placements, and for those it's, it's wonderful because they are in a safe and familiar environment. But others need to go out and get that experience because it helps them in the transition to adulthood. What more can the Welsh Government do to encourage employers to take on people with those conditions and learning difficulties so they can get that experience, so they can get the transition into adulthood and be confident that they'll be able to go out in the workplace? Well, we, we encourage schools, of course, to, uh, to look to create those uh, links uh, with employers. I think it is important for some youngsters to get that experience first in a more controlled environment that makes them more uh, comfortable, and then, of course, uh, look at uh, getting work placements in, in the future. Uh, but there will be examples. A member of our Brown has already uh, mentioned some where schools are working proactively in order to provide placements uh, for uh, youngsters with, uh, with particular learning needs. Crina Piorwerth. Diolch uh, llywydd mana siom fawr wedi bod yn anetholaeth i um, wrth i uh, disgyblion blwyddyn deg a deuddeg glywed na gyda nhw am gael mynd ar leoliadau profiad gwaith eleni. Dwi'n datgan diddordeb fel tad i un ferch ymlwyddyn deg ac un uh, ferch ymlwyddyn deuddeg. Ond a wneith y prif wnidog gytuno uh, efo y datganiad yma mae swyddogion cyngor ynys môn yn sicr yn deud sy'n wir. Mae yr hyn sydd wrth wraidd y penderfyniad, yma ti hwnt i unrhyw amheuaeth ydy penderfyniad Llywodraeth Cymru i dynnu cyllid ac felly capacity oddi ar gyrfa Cymru i wirio lleoliadau fel maen nhw wedi wneud yn y gorffau nôl. Well, dyma'n gwybod, cynghorwyr y mae'r ni sydd wedi rhedeg awdur o'r lleol, nid, lleol nid swyddogion ta beth. Uh, ond uh, dim ond Gwynedd ag Ynys Môn uh, uh, sydd wedi cymryd y penderfyniad uh, hyn. Mae'n gwybod awdur o'r eirill yn edrych ar ffyrdd newydd i sicrhau bod yn alefydd ar gael. Caroline Jones. Uh, First Minister, um, the, the best way to improve access to work experience placements for Welsh pupils is to improve uh, links between our schools and industry. Uh, while there are many good examples um, across the country, it is not enough. Um, what plans does your government have to ensure that every school in Wales maintains close links with local businesses? Well, most schools will want to do that anyway. As I said, most local authorities in Wales uh, are working to, uh, and they have plenty of notice, working to uh, see those links uh, strengthened. Uh, we know that uh, they knew the changes were coming in, uh, in 2015, but despite that, of course, uh, local authorities have been working proactively to maintain those links. Rhiannon Passmore. First Minister, the Welsh Government has a groundbreaking fusion programme that con contributes to many of the goals of the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act. The fusion programme seeks to encourage and empower young people to take an active part in arts, culture and heritage, and equally includes uh, innovative work experience placements. Additionally, the fusion programme in 2017 includes the priorities of employment and skills. First Minister, isn't this further evidence that the Welsh Government encourages a dynamic taste of the world of work from all quarters? 
quarters of Welsh life for Welsh school children? And how then can the Welsh Government build on this excellent best practice? We always look at, at good practice and see uh, whether that practice can be uh, extended across the, uh, the whole of Wales. It's right, of course, that uh, young people have the opportunity not just to gain qualifications, but also to understand what the world of work requires and have a broader outlook, outlook on life. That's what the Welsh back is, is intended to, uh, to deliver as well. But uh, we always look at examples of good practice uh, to see whether they can be extended. Question Di Russell George. Yeah. Uh, will the First Minister make a statement on the development of an active travel network in Montgomeryshire? Yeah. Well, the first stage of the Active Travel Act has been completed, and a number of active travel routes have been identified in Montgomeryshire. Uh, thank you, First Minister. Um, I'm sure you will agree that the Newtown Bypass will uh, provide an opportunity to develop a meaningful uh, active travel network for Newtown. Now, regrettably, Powys County Council were recently unsuccessful in securing funding from the local transport fund, uh, which would have gone some way to uh, securing the town's aspirations uh, to be an active travel town. Now, I understand the bid was supported uh, as a project, but not funded. Uh, so could I ask you, First Minister, to ask officials to take a fresh uh, look at this bid with a view to funding the scheme if additional funding uh, can be made available? Well, I understand Powys will be launching the new Llanfethlin safe route in community facility on Friday. That was made possible through allocated funding from the, uh, the Welsh Government, an example of that funding being made available to Powys. Uh, the two Powys Local Transport Fund schemes are at the top of our reserve list for 2017 to 18, as part of our wider work associated with the Newtown uh, Bypass. And we are looking at options uh, to see how we could allocate some in-year funds to the Powys Active Travel Bid for Newtown. Lee Waters. Is not part of the problem, First Minister, that some members seem to think that bypass is a part of active travel networks? 60% uh, of all car journeys are for journeys of less than five miles, and an emphasis on everyday journeys is one of the key ways of making the Active Travel Act achieve its potential. In Carmarthenshire, the Council's draft strategy has an emphasis on sports cycling. I, I'm, and I'm on sorry, I'm cycling. going to have to intervene. This question is about Montgomeryshire. Well, I did, did preface my remarks for, for yeah. sorry, to talk about the yeah. Newtown Bypass, yeah, but not, which has just uh, been referenced. Yeah, it's stretching it slightly to talk about Carmarthenshire. Indeed, I'm talking with yeah, <laughs> indeed, sir, I'm talking with the way local authorities are implementing the way the local authorities are implementing and interpreting this act, and whether the whether the first minister and the Welsh government will issue strong guidance to local authorities to make sure the emphasis is on short journeys, practical journeys, and not bypasses. Uh, well, we, we, the members should not get the idea that, Mon that there is a, a, a plan to merge Montgomeryshire with Carmarthenshire uh, <laughs> at this stage. Uh, but nevertheless, the point that the member makes is important. The point, and he, he has been consistent uh, in, in his view that it's absolutely crucial to promote cycling as more than just recreation. That as part, it is seen as an integral part of the transport system, if I can put it that way. And that's what the Active Travel Act was designed to, to do, and that's why it's uh, so important that where funding is available, then uh, cycle routes, for example, are provided when road schemes are in place. The Church Village Bypass is an example of that, uh, and uh, it is something, of course, that uh, we seek to promote uh, through funding and also through the legislation itself. Uh, it's clear now that the failure of the Prime Minister's cynical, opportunist, snap election gamble has uh, thrown the whole Brexit negotiating process into confusion, perhaps uh, exacerbated by the fact that she's appointed 16 Remainers to her Cabinet of 23. And in particular, this throws perhaps more into question than previously uh, the nature of our border controls uh, post-Brexit. Um, I'm wondering where the Labour Party now stands in this process, uh, because I'm sure the First Minister will seen that uh, both Jeremy Corbyn and John McDonnell have said that the Labour Party is formally committed to taking Britain out of the single market and the customs union, whereas Keir Starmer has said he wants to negotiate a new form of single market agreement, and Barry Gardner, the Shadow International Trade Secretary, has said that we criticised Mrs May for taking single market membership off the table right from the very beginning. So can the First Minister tell me whether he is now a Corbynite uh, or whether he's a Starmerite? Well, uh, what we do know uh, from the election is the hard Brexit that uh, is uh, espoused and promoted by, by UKIP is dead. 
uh, people were asked to uh, vote on a particular version of Brexit, specifically asked to vote on that by Theresa May, and she did not get that mandate. So, what happens next? We have put forward, together with Ply Cymru, uh, a white paper that uh, suggests a, a way forward as far as Brexit is uh, concerned. I have today written to the Prime Minister reminding her that it, it takes more than words when it comes to seeking engagement with the devolved governments. I welcome the words of Gitto Bev, for example, where he, re he recognises the, uh, the, the, the reality of the, of the situation, that a sustainable Brexit can only happen uh, if the devolved governments are fully part of that process. Uh, and I hope that the small group in Whitehall that have been trying to control this take note. Yeah. I read, of course, the government's uh, white paper on Brexit, which effectively isn't in favour of border controls at all in any meaningful sense. Um, and uh, my interest in this is the on the impact of unskilled and semi-skilled labour <coughs> being imported in uncontrollable numbers and the effect that that has upon working class wages. Now, the Bank of England has uh, published a, a substantial report uh, on the impact of immigration on occupational wages, the evidence from, from Britain, the conclusion of which was that the, imp the, the, the uh, a 10% rise in the proportion of immigrants is associated with a 2% reduction in pay in the semi and unskilled services sector. Um, and I struggle to understand why the, the, the Labour Party of all parties is prepared to countenance a situation where working class wages are driven down so that for many people the minimum wage is the maximum wage. The greatest threat to, uh, to people's wages is continued austerity. <laughs> that, is, that is the greatest threat. Uh, I, I wonder if he would make it clear what his position was on the minimum wage, for example, whether he supported its introduction uh, by a uh, Labour government or whether he supports uh, the need for uh, greater focus on policing the, uh, the minimum wage and whether he would see an increase in the minimum wage to the level of, of a living wage. Uh, those are the, the ways to protect people. Yes, it is important to protect people from not just their own people, but people from other countries from exploitation, uh, and that needs uh, more resources to be, to be put into the policing of that. But there's no doubt that the greatest threat to wages is a Tory government that is bent on austerity. I, I notice that the First Minister neatly sidesteps the, the question. UKIP did actually support the introduction of the minimum wage, and certainly we, 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 certainly we, we support policing it effectively, because the law of the land should be obeyed. Uh, and it's no answer to the problem of wage compression to say that we will take strong action against employers who are breaking the law. What is of more concern is that the average wage rate at the bottom of the income scale is being driven down for more and more people. And there are hundreds of thousands of people who are on the breadline who are forced into even more precarious situations as a result of uncontrolled immigration. Surely, firm control of unskilled and semi-skilled migration from the European Union, which can be controlled from the rest of the world under existing law, is a vital necessity for ordinary working class people. Well, first of all, again, he misses the point about border control. If you want to have border control, you have a hard border between Northern Ireland and the Republic. There is no other way of doing it. Uh, unless you, you want to put British border agency officials in the Republic's airports and ports, and that is a, a strategy fraught with uh, problems, if I can uh, put it diplomatically. Uh, that situation has still not been properly resolved. But for me, the issue of low wages is driven by the austerity we've seen for the past seven years, the fact we haven't seen increases, I I real increases in pay, the fact that we've seen people who are in work lose in work benefits. We, we used to say, and the Secretary of State got himself into trouble uh, uh, on this, we used to say to people, if you get a job, your income will increase. That is no longer the case because of the fact that those at the top of the income scale have received more money through tax cuts and those at the bottom have received less money through the reduction and loss of in-work benefits. That's what the, the focus should be on, making sure that those people who are working hard, working long hours, get the support they deserve and they haven't had it over the last seven years. First Minister, the NHS is our most cherished public service. All of us uh, rely on it, and it's the single largest spending commitment in the Welsh budget, which reflects uh, its importance to our people. Are you satisfied with the financial governance of the NHS? Yes, I am. Uh, there are issues that arise uh, every year from the boards, but uh, they've been given a three-year time scale within which to operate when it comes to uh, producing their uh, budgets. But, of course... Uh, we would always want to see more funds made available to the Welsh budget through the annual austerity uh, it, in Westminster. On Friday, it was announced that four of the ten uh, NHS organisations have failed to break even over the three-year financial period. 
Now, we know that three health boards have been placed uh, under targeted intervention, and a fourth is being monitored. You mentioned that you introduced three-year budgeting in order to try to solve those problems, but we're still seeing these deficits emerge over that three-year period. First Minister, under your watch, are NHS finances sound? Yes, they are. Four organisations out of ten were unable to meet their three-year duty. We've been open about the particular challenges those organisations are facing. It's why they've all been escalated under our NHS intervention arrangements. A situation where four out of seven health boards aren't meeting your targets isn't one that can be described as financially sound. This is about how the NHS is being managed. It's about supporting the staff and the patients of the NHS by ensuring that the service is in good financial health. It's about health boards meeting the statutory duties which you have set out. Now, in March, your health secretary said that the four health boards in question would not be bailed out. He also said that he was, in quotes, pretty certain that NHS services wouldn't be cut as a result of these deficits. Now, being pretty certain doesn't fill me with confidence, First Minister. What we need today is a cast-iron guarantee. So can you tell us, when will the NHS finances improve? Is it still the case that you won't bail out struggling NHS uh, health boards? And is the government responsible for the Welsh NHS? Will you guarantee that deficit repayment plans for these health boards won't result in cuts to our health services. No services have suffered as a result of these deficits. We have ensured that these organisations had sufficient cash to meet their normal commitments, and we manage their deficits within the overall health budget. And subject to audit confirmation, the overall health budget was balanced in 2016 to 17. Now, through the intervention arrangements, we are working closely with those organisations to address the governance management and service issues that underpin their deficits, and we will not shy away from taking firm action with these organisations if that is what is necessary. No guarantees. Well, well, well. Plaid, Andrew R. T. Davis. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. Uh, First Minister, um, one of the stories that came through at the general election that, because of the campaigning, didn't get the uh, coverage it deserved was the lack of this government's ability to meet its commitment from 2010 that all cancer patients in Wales would have a key worker can you explain why, seven years on, so many cancer patients are not getting that key worker identified when they get the diagnosis in Wales? Well, one of the messages of the general election is that people didn't want the Welsh Conservatives. I mean, that's uh, fairly surprising. He actually, he actually raises it. Uh, I, I do wonder uh, how much uh, more he can take of being replaced as, uh, as a leader on, uh, on, on progress. But he asked a question about uh, cancer key uh, workers. That is something that we're still working uh, towards to make sure that everyone has uh, that key worker. And he will see that the, fight, the, uh, the amount of money that's gone into cancer treatment has, uh, has increased over the years. You can have the pop shop, First Minister, but people would have listened that you didn't give an answer why people don't get a key worker. Uh, and so you carry on with the pot shots, but people who get a cancer diagnosis deserve all the assistance they can get. And as someone who's lost family members along with other members in this chamber, uh, we welcome that commitment that the government made at that time in 2010. But as Macmillans have identified, at least, at least a third of patients do not get that key worker when they get the diagnosis. It's a simple question, First Minister, and instead of being flippant, can you give a serious answer as to when that target will be met? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I believe I did give a serious answer, and like him, I've lost uh, people close to me, and did see my wife uh, deal with, with cancer. It affects so many of us. But we, the Cancer Implementation Group, uh, which is responsible for the delivery of the Cancer Delivery Plan, has identified the key worker role as a priority. As such, work is being undertaken currently to develop a set of standards and associated measures to review the progress health boards and trusts are making in the provision of key workers, as well as for other priority issues. It's also important to note that the Cancer Patient Experience Survey provides a good picture of the situation in Wales. Uh, no other major health condition has such a large-scale survey assessing patient experience, and we do know uh, that, uh, the, that the response has been good in terms of people's experience of the, the treatment they have received, uh, and the 2016 survey results will be published later this year. Again, on the second time of asking, I still have not got a date when cancer patients and people connected with cancer services will know when this commitment is going to be met. 
It is a fact that Public Health Wales have said it's not mandatory for them to collect the data to identify where the shortfalls are in the not system. Measured, you know, so you can read all you want from your script, First Minister. You made the commitment in 2010. <laughs> Public Health Wales just say one basic point, it's not mandatory to collect the data. How can you genuinely say that you know you're progressing in meeting this target? And I do put the question again to you. When will you hit that target here in Wales? And will you now make it mandatory for Public Health Wales to gain that data so that we can see progress to meeting that goal? We support you in this measure. We want to see it met. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I can't go beyond the answer that I've already given to him, namely that work is ongoing. Uh, he asks the question, when will yeah. that work be completed? I will write to him with a date on that. He's asking that specific question. Uh, but this is something that we want to see uh, implemented in the future. Question three, Neil Hamilton. Uh, what, will, uh, what progress has been made uh, towards Wales becoming a no cold calling nation? Well, the zones have been set up in the majority of Welsh local authorities. We are committed to making our communities safer. I'd encourage local authorities to continue to introduce ways to stop cold calling to protect the most vulnerable people in society. I thank the uh, First Minister for that reply. I don't know whether he's aware of uh, a poll which has been conducted by the debt charity called Step Change. This has uh, discovered that 59% of people report having received one cold call a week. 8% have had more than one call per day. And one of the principal concerns about this is these calls offering high cost credit. About a third apparently received one of these calls every week. And one in eight has actually taken out high cost credit with an average of £1,052 of extra borrowing taken out. This poses significant dangers for vulnerable people on low incomes. And I wonder if the First Minister can tell me what further progress the government intends to make in the next 12 months towards ending this curse. Well, we did provide funding in 2013 to increase the number of cold calling zones in Wales. That's helped to protect vulnerable people from uh, scams. I know that some local authorities have also carried out that work. My own local authority in Bridgend, for example, ran a very successful campaign uh, a few years ago uh, informing people of what scams looked like, not just postal scams or online scams as well. They can be uh, hugely uh, believable, given the fact they will often uh, use uh, emails that look like emails from established companies, uh, even though they are, they are not. We will, of course, continue to work with the Police and Police and Crime Commissioners on issues including fraud crime. Mike Hedges. Presiding officer, I'm a, long, a, a strong and long-term supporter of no cold calling zones, and I've, I've raised this several times in this chamber. It's far too many of them target the very vulnerable, and far too many of the very vulnerable have taken advantage of. I have some very popular uh, no cold call, no calling zones in Swans East. I have also noticed the growth, as I'm sure every else in this room has, where they've been going around election time, in the number of houses which say no cold callers not welcome. I'm sure people have seen that uh, in their, tra their travels. What I'm asking is, what can the Welsh Government do to help increase the number and size of cold calling zones? Because a lot of the cold calling zones, which are very popular, tend to cover a couple of hundred houses, whereas the. I mean, I'd, I'd really like the whole of Swansea to be covered by it. I'm not sure if my two colleagues uh, represent the rest of Swansea too, but uh, certainly the whole of Swansea is covered by it because it is a nuisance. And yes, you can't do anything about uh, the people coming in by email, but we ought to be able to stop people banging on doors, telling somebody they've got a loose slate, and then charging them tens of thousands of pounds. Yeah, I mean, it, for all of us in this chamber, it's always difficult to know whether no cold calling means political canvases as well. Though I have noticed people now putting on their doors no canvases. Uh, as well as no cold calling, but uh, it's an important point. I mean, we will know of people who have been scammed in this way, uh, particularly uh, older people uh, who uh, feel particularly vulnerable. We do know that no cold calling zones have been set up in the majority of Welsh local authorities to reduce the number of cold uh, callers, and we continue to work with local authorities to uh, to encourage them to set up more zones in the future. Janet Finch Saunders. Uh, since 2005, my local authority has been, indeed been very proactive in ensuring the introduction of no cold calling zones. In fact, I was the Cabinet member introducing them at the time. Yeah. A joint initiative with North Wales Police and Conway Trading Standards has now established over 1,300 zones, including the entire community of Treview. Your government, as you say, has made several thousands of pounds available for this initiative. However, <laughs> 10 local authorities just haven't bothered taking up the funding. 93% um, of people uh, in a survey are not wanting doorstep sellers. 60% uh, have received uninvited 
visits from contractors with 25% experience in repeat calls. So what steps, I'll repeat, what steps is your government taking to ensure no cold calling zones are robustly implemented across the whole of Wales in order to protect our most vulnerable and those living alone from what are often bogus callers and cowboy contractors? Well, the first difficulty is we don't have executive powers as a government to enforce the zones. The Assembly does have some legislative competence, but it's quite limited and limited to consumer protection. Uh, that means, of course, the local authorities have a particularly uh, important role. She's mentioned, of course, her own local authority and uh, welcome the work that they have done. Uh, for those ten local authorities who haven't taken up the, uh, the funding, it's a matter for them, of course, to, uh, to explain uh, and a matter to be uh, taken up with them as to, as to why it is that they feel that no cold calling zones are, are not uh, appropriate for their area. Question, Pedwar, Darren Miller. Will the First Minister make a statement on the importance of seaside tourism in North Wales? Yes, our coastal environment is a major attraction for many visitors who are drawn by the quality of our coastal landscape, wildlife and sea. And of course, so many of those uh, seaside attractions uh, are along the northern coast. Uh, there are many of those seaside towns in my own constituency which benefit uh, from tourism, including Towin and Kimble Bay, Llandilis, uh, and indeed Colwyn Bay. But one of the things which puts that tourism industry at risk is the risk of coastal flooding. And I noticed the publication of a report by the Public Accounts Committee uh, today, which criticised this distinct lack of leadership on the part of the Welsh Government in securing. Uh, improvements in coastal flood defences. The First Minister will know, because I've raised it with him on many occasions, that I'm very concerned about the old Colwyn promenade in my own constituency, which has been pummeled by storms year after year, which has severely damaged the integrity uh, of that promenade, which protects, of course, the A55 trunk road and the North Wales railway line. And I'd be grateful, First Minister, if you could step up to the plate, take a lead on this issue to ensure that that work is done as a matter of priority within in this assembly term? Well, first of all, in terms of the, the committee's report, it's not, not quite what it, what it says to my mind. It does make the, the quite valid point that there are, so, there are many different organisations who all have a responsibility for flooding, some seven. Uh, the point that the, the report was trying to say was, well, if things go wrong, who then is responsible? And that's a valid question, which we uh, will consider as part of the response to the committee's uh, report. Uh, it may need legislation uh, to make sure that the situation is, uh, is clearer. I mean, for example, Members will know I was uh, a year and a half ago now on the F55 where flooding had occurred. Uh, ultimately, it was a matter for Gwynedd Council, uh, but it needed funding from Welsh Government, so we worked together to, to deliver that. Uh, but clearly, there, there, is, uh, there is an issue here that will need to be resolved in terms of does, is, is the situation robust enough if we have that many uh, organisations and individuals quite often who are responsible for controlling flooding, and we'll consider our response to that uh, as, as part of our response to the committee's report. Llyr Griffith. Uh, Diolch Llywydd. Um, Ma, um, <coughs> chreole a chreoliadau yr Undeb Europeaidd, wrth gwrs, wedi bod yn bennau gyfrifol am y traws newidiad i ni wedi gweld yn ansawdd uh, dŵr nofio a glendid treithau a'r ffaith bod cynifer nawr o'n treithau ni'n y gogledd uh, a status baner las sydd wedi bod yn ffactor bwysig iawn o sabwyn denu twristiaid. Um, gan yn bod ni'n gadael yr Undeb Europeaidd, wrth gwrs, a, a bod Brexit yn, yn dod, um, beth allwn ni'n wneud i sicrhau uh, bod ni'n gwarchod uh, y safonau am gylchedol yna. Be byddwch chi fel Llywodraeth Cymru yn ei wneud i sicrhau na byddwn ni byth yn mynd nôl i'r sefyllfa fel ag yr oddi, lle roedd yn treithau yn moroedd ni ymhlith y bitra mwy afiach yn Ewrop gyfan. Hadd i'n iawn. Does dim reswm pam uh, allwn ni ddim gadw uh, ar reolau sydd yna ar hyn o bryd. Mwy'n anrhywbeth, wrth gwrs, i Llywodraeth Cymru a'r cynulliad hyn i, uh, i benderfa ni uh, ona. Byddwn ni fel Llywodraeth ddim o blaid uh, llai hair safonau sydd yna. Ni'n cofio amser. Uh, <laughs> Mwy'n cael amser lle o dda'r afon, oedd mynd trwyddo uh, dreulu ges, ges i'n hodi, pen y bond, lle oedd yr afon yn rhedeg uh, lliwiau gwahanol. Yn dibynnu oedd beth wedi cael ei dablu mewn yr afon. Uh, glo, uh, lipstick, oedd y popeth yn mewn yr afon, a, a achos am ni ddau'r afon yn goch ac yn wyrdd wedi'r sneud mewn oli hwnna. Ond, wrth gwrs, bys yn bwysig yw, er bod ni'n gadael yr Undeb Ewropeaidd, dwi'n oedd ddim yn meddwl bod rhaid ni felly newid y rheoliadau yma yn Cymru. Question pimp, Jeremy Miles. Diolch Llywydd, what assessment has the Welsh Government made of compulsory voting? Uh, we are not in favour of uh, compulsory uh, voting. As a government, of course, we have taken a position that uh, in assembly elections we want to see 16 to 18 year olds uh, voting, but not in favour of compulsory voting. I thank the First Minister for that question. And on the subject of voting, I thank him for his leadership of the Welsh, election, uh, uh, Welsh Le Labour election campaign, which, uh, in contrast with that of the party opposite, was both strong and stable. Uh, another feature of that 
Another feature of the campaign was an increase in turnout, and yet one in three people uh, did not vote. Compulsory voting is no substitute for political engagement or political education, but as well as being a right that people have fought for and died for, it can also be seen as a civic obligation that we owe uh, one to another. As the Welsh Government and the National Assembly consider voting arrangements in the future, uh, notwithstanding the Welsh Government's position, will he ensure that the experience of Australia and Belgium uh, is taken into full account and that of other countries where that civic obligation has been enshrined in law? We will consider that. I have to say, I sometimes consider compulsory voting to be a form of cop-out for politicians. Uh, it's all our responsibility collectively to increase uh, turnout. We'll never get in, don't even get to 100 percent in the in the countries that, where there's compulsory uh, voting. Uh, what I saw on Thursday was was a huge increase in the numbers of young people voting. Uh, at 10 o'clock on the Thursday morning, uh, I, I could see that something unusual was happening in terms of the the, the turnout. Uh, and so, from my perspective, it was marvellous to see young people coming out to vote in the numbers that they, uh, that they did. I hope that continues uh, in the future, because it was never good for society for a view to take hold that older people vote and younger people don't. You know, and I'm glad that younger people have found their voice. David Meldon. First Minister, can I say that, like you, I'm glad that uh, the voter turnout last Thursday was much closer to the historic trend that we've had in uh, the United Kingdom, and that is something that we should all be uh, very grateful for. Uh, w one thing that's always struck me as very peculiar is why we vote on a Thursday. Um, there have been a couple of occasions in the 20th century where general elections were held on Tuesdays, but uh, why don't we vote like most countries around the world uh, uh, over the weekend? Now, that surely would be a great way of ensuring that uh, as many citizens as possible have every opportunity to get to the voting uh, yeah. polls. There's no reason why it should be a Thursday. Uh, in fact, there's no reason why we shouldn't look at uh, weekend voting. Sunday is still problematic. I don't think the DUP will be pressing for that in the discussions that they have with the uh, Conservative government as, as Sabbatarians. Uh, and indeed, uh, the, the Western Isles of Scotland, will have, people there will have a view on that. I think Sunday voting, therefore, is, is still difficult uh, in some parts of the, of the UK. But there's no reason why people shouldn't vote on a Saturday, for example, uh, when most people are, are not in work and when voting might be easier. And that's something to, uh, to consider uh, as an institution in the years to come. Simon Thomas. Dio Clywydd. Dois dim ffigiwa, of course, uh, ebod na ffigiwa wedi dyfynnu. Dois dim ffigiwa am y, y faint o bobl ifanc nath bledeisio a wythos diwetha, ond fel chitha, ond ni'n teimlo bod na mwy o bobl ifanc yn troi mas yn, yn y gorllewin. Ac wyna benog y falch bod aelod ifanc y uh, Senedd erbyn hyn yn Benlyc, yn aelod dros uh, Blaid Cymru yn Cerfudigion. Yn mm. sicr oedd Benlyc wedi cael lot fawr o ffenwyr ifanc yn ei helpu fe yn y syddi i ymgyrch. Ond o edrych a sut allwn ni cadw'r pobl ifanc yma i ddod mas i pleidleisio ac yn bryn o fod yn pleidleisio norfodol, beth arall allwn ni'n gwneud i e pleidleisio dynodau gwahanol? Ond nag o'n byd hefyd i, I dofi'r cyswllt yma bod rhaid i chi bwyd pleidlais mewn un man yn unig ac mewn uh, oes electronig na ddylai fod yn bosib i unrhyw un, un fwyd pleidlais unrhyw le yng Nghymru i'r ymgeisydd maen nhw'n ei moyn. Uh, well, does dim rheswm o fewn i'n gwyddo y pam dylai uh, pleidio'r sydd digidol ddim digwydd. Uh, Mae yna broblem am arferol, yn un o dio gilwch, fel fewn i'n deall sydd yn neud yn uh, anodd iawn ar hyn o bryd. Ond does dim rheswm yn y pendro o pam dylai'n ddim i ddigwydd. Uh, ar un adeg, oedd pob un o'r siambr hyn yn gweld y dwarnod pleidleisio fel y dwarnod oedd y sicrhau bob o mas i pleidleisio. Nid felly mai, dim rhagor, achos uh, mae'n siwgo'n bod yn pleidleisio wrth uh, 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 trwy'r tr tr post. Uh, so, mae'n ei gwyddo'r dystym rheswm pam uh, dyr y system i aros yn gwmws fel mafe, achos un o'r pethau nes i sylwi dros y dynodau dwetha wrth nos dwetha, oedd y ffaith bod bobl ifanc yn cael ei ysbrydoli i bledleiso o achos cyfryngau cymdeithasol. Nelio nhw'n cael ei newyddion, oedd grwpiau o'n wedi penderfynu i, 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 I bledleiso, a felly uh, holl bwysig bod hwnna'n cael ei ystyried, a holl bwysig bod ni'n ystyried yn y pendraw, pam mae'r amser yn iawn uh, I, I ystyried uh, bledleiso digidol. Question Chwech, Mike Hedges. Uh, will the First Minister make a statement on the Welsh Government's use of tillids in tackling Japanese knotweed? Well, progress has been made on the biocontrol of Japanese knotweed, including tillid stocks from Japan. Uh, there are now better survival rates for tillids as well. That's a key development in tackling uh, knotweed. Uh, there are further releases of tillids uh, uh, that are planned for the course of this year. Oh, can I thank the First Minister for his answer? As people are well aware, both in here and definitely in Swansea, Swansea is very much the capital of knotweed. It's not a, not a title we particularly like, but it's a huge, it's a huge problem within my constituency and, and neighbouring constituency. 
I'm very pleased to success in the initial trial, but I wouldn't be fully fulfilling my duty as a Swansea member without saying, can I ask uh, that uh, further, further sites are being considered, that sites in Swansea, which is one of the worst affected areas in Wales, are considered for these new sites? Well, as the member knows, the, the trial site in Swansea is located in his constituency at, uh, at Lansamlet, along a 450-metre section of the Nant Brand stream. Uh, care has to be taken, of course, uh, when releasing another non-native species to control an existing non-native species, as the Australians will tell you, uh, given the plagues of frogs that they quite often, uh, biblical almost, plagues, plagues of frogs that they, they experience uh, there. So uh, this is being done in a controlled way. Uh, we hope, of course, that this will be a successful way of uh, controlling uh, knotweed by a natural predator without, of course, the, that creating imbalance elsewhere uh, in, the, uh, in, in terms of biodiversity. Paul Davis. Well, in Ginta Mana Mana Group, uh well Burd Projects with Kali uh Isabadli and Lean Adelio Gida Gida Notweed, we need we thought Gida Farneriad are Drous, uh Dunes and Eric Anglin are Huna. Uh, Mar uh, Ganolvan uh, am Ameth a uh, Bayo with Onieth uh, Rungladol, uh, save Sivadliansi, the Minade Elu, and Nade uh, a Gwaith Amchil um, Gwaith uh, Gwithonol, our Hino Breed, our Ran Bull Project, and so Mana uh, Gwaith and Camry Lea, our Mana Kavoyth material Camry and Ran or Gwaith. Caroline Jones. Uh, First Minister, um, it's estimated that around £200 million has been spent in the UK alone trying to tackle uh, Japanese knotweed, which causes around £170 million worth of damage to property each year. The Silid trials are very promising, but if the insect can successfully establish itself in the UK, it will only tame <coughs> knotweed, not eradicate it. Um, what more can the Welsh Government do to support Swansea University in their search to find ways to ensure that knotweed is eradicated and no longer threatens the property of our constituents? Well, we have supported a two-year trial at Swansea examining the chemical and mechanical control of Japanese knotweed. Uh, discussions are taking place uh, uh, at the moment with the University to improve uh, our control advice in line with those findings. Question five, Rina Piorwerth. I want to prove any dog that scan the Adam was an ether yachid medal ir Ivank. Urban Henry in well effet, Raglin or Yana seed are a guish, well ran or low and sow at yachid medal. I gave for Raglin, if no gigan with million of Luidin or Gamath Achwanego, he was an ether yachid medal planter for Bolivank. Mewn yn uh, falch iawn, uh, chydig wrth nos anolog, gael sgwrs efo Laura Burton Merch ifanc o fôn sy'n gwirfoddoli uh, i amser uh, i newid a sy'n gwneud gwaith rhagorol uh, yn pwyso am well yna i wasanaethau iechyd meddwl. Mewn i'n cytuno efo hi yn sicr fod angen gwneud mwy i newid a gweddau. Pobl ifanc y tuag at iechyd meddwl, ond hefyd uh, bod raid i gynnydd mewn ymwybyddiaeth fynd law yn llaw, wrth gwrs, a buddsoddiad mewn adnoddau a chyllid digonol. Uh, o'r anodd adnoddau, ydy'r prif wynidog yn cytuno i bod hi'n anerbyniol fod yn y smôn wedi cael ei gadael uh, heb psychiatrydd ymgynghorol o gwbl i oedolion rhwng De now a chwedeg pym poed, uh, rhywbeth sy'n effeithio ar Lora fel llawer o bobl eraill. A gydi'r prif wneud o'r gwneud cytuno hefyd o'r anor ochr ymwybyddiaeth bod angen gwneud llawer mwy fydd soddi mewn addysg iechyd meddwl ar gyfer pobl ifanc er mwyn uh, gwneud y gwaith na god i ymwybyddiaeth. Mae'n anghorri ddim pob ysgol uwchrad wrth gwrs er mwyn helpu, ond i rai efo o'r ifanc, mae rai cael mwy o, o gyngor. Dyna'r rhan o'r gwrs mi wedi beth oedd i 8 milion o flwyddyn uh, mewn i CAMS. So, Dydych chi'n ar um, ardal uh, Betsy Cadwallad yn gynnwys ennis môn wrth gwrs. Uh, ni'n gwybod bod uh, y nifer uh, oedd yn aros am asesau rydym yn lawr o 6.69 mewn blwyddyn, sy'n felly uh, lleihad 86.5% a dyna wrth gwrs beth mae'r uh, buddsoddiad uh, wedi, uh, uh, wedi wneud. Angela Burns. 
Um, First Minister, the Making Sense report was published in tandem with the Making Sense initiative, which is supported by the High Needs Collaborative and the Wales Observatory on the Human Rights of Children and Young People. And this report highlighted that for many young people, support for the transition into adult services is non-existent. In fact, young people say that they are ill-prepared for the way that adult services operate, which is quite differently to the way that CAMS operates. And it's a scenario borne out by many cases that have come to me in my own constituency of Carmarthen West and South Pembrokeshire. First Minister, can you clarify what the Welsh Government intends to do to ensure that that transition, which is a tricky time for, ch for uh, children becoming young people and young people becoming adults in all sorts of different areas, from educa education through to health service, is particularly looked at and reviewed to help those who need the support of professionals such as adult services and children and adolescent mental health? Yes, that, that uh, transition is important, but we have ensured the funding has been made available for third sector partners to ensure young people with the most severe mental illnesses are supported into social, education and employment opportunities. But of course, uh, with uh, regard to the extra CALMS funding, what, is, what that is designed to do, of course, uh, is to make sure that young people get the help they need at the time they need it so they don't have to rely. Uh, some will, of course, but they don't have to rely on adult mental health services in the future. Question, Oith Paul Davis. How life of prevenir drug that's ganiad and that parry was an eighth of Yechid and Sir Benbro? The Manorethi Ugonade and Silver board Sir Benbro and Calgos and Ether Yechid in Roy, a caniade gore possibly glavio. To ensure the Hinkatino of the prevenir drug, my boy Sig board was an eighth of Yechid, Brees and Calilioli, Moragos, Ibobol, Agsiv and Bossiv. Narma, I'm going to hurry, see where the Mdeolos for Tilun Helig would be Adolagir. Nivero Vabano, Sidwadi Maru, or all Genedigeth, and Sir Bemro. My Adolagiad and Dangos were a Savashwa with a great thuggy. Ersi was an ethe Babano, Caliganoli, Yespati Glanguili, and Herverdin. And Skeeler Adolagiad Amad, I shall dread he now and what long I'll edrich are a Savashwa, Mark, he stirred, I'll Gabluinor, Ined Goval or Benig, Ivabano, a sicker high ward, Gwasanethe, Pediatric Launamser, and a Spati Lunhelig. Well, but then Beth Brav said I'm going to hurry. Then write data, isn't he? Ah, sicker high when you get the history of the data. Here, when you go across my data, and you own it now. Do them the need, honey? But there was none a help on the Ningo board, but a colleague, Brian Hino, with the grade board, a Guasanaita, and and Ardal Hawella and Sav. Simon Thomas. The other way, when my special get go for pediatric nurse nurse, he board and special draws draw. So my honour will be called to know the arts, but he shouldn't have to do one of them. He board and special bar Hawall. Felly pryd y gawn ni nôl y gwasanaeth pediatric dros nos. Well, bod uh, bod ddi echyd yn gynghori hyn o bryd. Mae ni am gynghori cyn bod hi'r gyda uh, uh, arbenigwyr uh, yn yr ardal er mwyn y sicrhau uh, gwasanaeth y cynaliadwy. Ond mi'n wir i weud y rhywbeth dros dro yw hwn a nid rhywbeth parhaol. Cwestiwn nawr, Vicky Howells. Diolch Llewydd. What action is the Welsh Government taking to promote equality for older women in the Cynan Valley? Well, we are strongly committed both to supporting older people and to promote equality between genders, and that's just reflected, of course, in the Wellbeing and Future Generations Act and the Strategy for Older People, which supports action to address issues facing both women and men in later life. Uh, thank you, First Minister. I know you have written previously to the then Secretary of State for Energy and Climate Change, calling for a review of the Miners' Pension Scheme. I recently met with campaigners from the UK Miners' Pension Scheme Association, who highlighted to me how the current workings of the scheme badly affect miners' widows in particular, with some, for example, receiving just £10 a week. Would you write to the UK Government again, highlighting the way that reform of the scheme could benefit not only miners, but also promote economic equality for miners' widows in my constituency of Cynan Valley and elsewhere in Wales? Well, I met with representatives from the South Wales uh, NUM uh, a few weeks ago, and they uh, outlined again strongly the case for a review. Uh, we will be writing to the newly elected UK Government, requesting it to consider a review of the scheme. As a Government, we have indicated our support for a review of the current arrangements for the surpluses of the Mine Workers' Pension uh, Scheme. As members will know, uh, it has already been said in, in plenary. And I wrote to the trade unions this February to reiterate our support for a review. David Malden. So many older women have a uh, problem with uh, mobility. They are quite frail. Uh, and uh, we need to shape certain public policies with that in mind. For instance, transport, uh, the improvement in bus services, free bus uh, travel, etc. 
uh, is a help, but really we need to focus on things like community transport schemes as well, which allow people otherwise uh, who would be excluded from at least easy transportation the right to access a whole range of services. That's correct, and that's why uh, we work, to work with uh, local authorities and with uh, bus and train operators to make sure that uh, uh, services are accessible. For example, as part of the work for the South Wales uh, Metro, accessibility of trains and stations uh, will be an important part uh, of the development of that project. Question Dig, Michelle Brown. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, what assessment has the First Minister made of the impact that last week's UK general election will have on the Welsh Government's education policy? Well, education is devolved and our priorities are set out in taking Wales forward. OK, thank you for that, First Minister. Um, Labour's education policies included abolition of tuition fees and the reintroduction of maintenance grants, um, something that we would actually support in UKIP in respect of first M students. Do you have any intention of implementing this in Wales? Well, that was on the basis of a Labour government being elected and providing us with the money to enable us to look at doing that. Uh, that has not happened yet, uh, and uh, when uh, that happens, we will, of course, uh, want to see how we can ensure that students in Wales are no worse off than those in England, as we've done for the past, uh, past number of years uh, under successive governments. Mark Reckless. Will the First Minister uh, reconsider the uh, future curriculum for Wales and the extent to which it will be based on changes that we've already seen in Scotland in light of both the declining trend in Scottish PISA results and the decline in support for the SNP which have overseen that curriculum? Well, we haven't just taken the Scottish model and implemented it in Wales. Uh, the model will be implemented uh, it, uh, to ensure that uh, it is appropriate uh, to Wales and it's right that we should look at... Uh, uh, changing the curriculum in order to make sure that it uh, provides young people the best education possible.